One of the things that I like about sewing is that there's always something to learn. And this month, I actually learned how to do three different things, and I have my eye on a fourth. So let me tell you about those. I'm Madi with Madi Sews, and thanks for hanging with me. So I like to share a lot of my sewing makes with you, and tips and tricks, fabric hauls, all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that's up your alley, I'm happy you're here. Um, today, I actually wanted to share with you some of the things that I learned this month. Now, it's funny because every now and then I'll hear people say, oh, but you know, you already know how to do that and everything you make is good. No, it's really not. <laughs> In fact, a lot of it isn't and that's what forces me to learn new skills. Because I had to figure a couple of things out and, you know, just kind of find a better way that works for me to doing a couple of things, I actually learned three new techniques. And so I wanted to share those with you. The first thing that I found very helpful was making continuous bias tape. Now, I had seen people make continuous bias tape in the past, but never had any interest in making it until I started making a bunch of dresses for Project Dress a Girl and realized that I don't want to buy bias tape and it's a hassle running to Joann's and discovering every time I go that they don't have the colors that I need. So why not make my own bias tape? And when you make continuous bias tape, it really does make the process go so much faster. And so now I have lots of bias tape that I can use for tons of projects. And so this to me was actually a really big game changer. That actually leads me to the second thing, which is how to make inverse mitered corners like this. Now, you all, this is something that's kind of plagued me for a while. I remember running up against this issue when I made my Taina jumpsuit, and it had these corners that I was trying to bind because I had used this netting, and it was just, to me, it felt almost impossible. This time around, because it wasn't on the inside of the garment, like you can actually see that on the outside, I decided that I needed to figure it out. And the truth of the matter is, after I figured out how to sew that angle into my bias tape, it quickly became a game changer for me because then I could just slip it into the inverse corner that I'm working with. And this technique actually makes a really beautiful finish on both the inside and the outside of the fabric, which is really nice. You can also find that link in the description box below. And the third thing that I learned was how to add heart pockets onto any garment. Um, and I take you through how to actually draft it just using some paper and then cutting it out and actually making your heart pocket. These have turned out to be so much fun. And actually, I'm thinking about adding them to some of my garments in fall, like maybe a top or two. <laughs> I just, you all, uh, how... It's a heart pocket. How much sweeter could it possibly be? And you know where to find that link. This month, I really feel as though my sewing has leveled up because I've been able to make tons of bias tape really quickly using the continuous method and then turn that into an inverse corner for some of those tighter necklines and keyhole openings. And come on, you all, heart pockets. Need I say more? <laughs> The one thing that I'm really looking forward to learning about next month is actually this. And this is a ruffle foot that you can attach to your sewing machine. I'm gonna attach this to my brother machine. But I'm really, I'm really excited to use this because I've been making a lot of ruffles and I tend to do a lot of hand gathering. So I wanna check this out to see if it could speed up the process, if it could make some nice uniform gathers. You all, I've been playing with this in my hand because I haven't had the chance to actually attach it to my machine yet. I've been sewing lots of labels onto dresses. <laughs> so no ruffles lately. But this little thing looks really cool. And it was actually given to me by one of you all who had seen my ruffle tutorial where I was hand gathering all of my ruffles. So thank you, Miss Phyllis. This is, I really love it. <laughs> When I do get around to making a bunch of ruffles again, I'll be sure to share with you my thoughts and my experience on using the ruffle foot. 
If you're still making dresses for Project Dress a Girl, you have one more day to get your pictures posted over on Instagram using hashtag Project Dress a Girl and tag me at Marisos for Curves. So that way I can add your dresses to the total number of dresses made this month and also included in the compilation video, which is looking quite long right now. We've gotten a lot of dresses already submitted and it's really exciting to see. So go ahead and post the pictures on there. If you don't have Instagram, email me the pictures there and then mail out your dresses next week. Easy. Then don't forget to check out Heather with Textile Tailored Thoughts over here because she made six dresses using some fabrics that you may not have thought about. She did some really fun big heart pockets and kangaroo pockets. Check her out if you need a little bit of inspiration. And until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.